a team of scientists unseals a tomb buried deep beneath the sands of Upper Egypt. Inside, bones, brittle with time, wrapped in linen, untouched for over 4,000 years. Thousands of kilometers away, a tribal relic is unearthed in the Indian subcontinent, carved from the same stone, marked with eerily similar symbols. Two ancient worlds, believed to have developed independently, suddenly appear linked. Could it be coincidence? Or is there a forgotten chapter of human history hiding in plain sight? As archaeologists, linguists, and geneticists compare notes, a discovery begins to emerge, one that defies textbooks and reshapes everything we thought we knew about early civilization. Not through myth, not through legends, but through DNA. The strands of life itself are about to expose a connection older than the pyramids and deeper than the Indus River. Cultures separated by deserts, oceans, and millennia. Now united by a molecular fingerprint. What if the ancient Egyptians and the people of early India weren't strangers, but relatives? And if that's true, what else has history hidden from us? When we think of the ancient world, two civilizations stand tall above the rest, Egypt and India. Egypt, with its towering pyramids, mummified pharaohs and golden tombs, dates back over 5,000 years. On the other side of the continent, the Indus Valley civilization, with its intricate urban planning and undeciphered script, flourished around the same time, between 3300 and 1300 BCE. For centuries, historians treated these two cultures as completely separate stories. There were no known trade routes directly connecting the Nile to the Indus, no shared language, no recorded encounters. And yet, similarities persisted. Stone seals from the Indus resemble those found near Thebes. Burial practices, once considered unique to Egypt, suddenly echo in the Gangetic Plain. Even the geometry of sacred structures, from temples to tombs, follow oddly familiar ratios. Could these be cultural coincidences or evidence of a deeper, forgotten link? In 2022, a comprehensive DNA analysis began, comparing ancient skeletal remains from both civilizations. The goal was simple. Trace the genetic ancestry of two of humanity's oldest urban societies. But what they found was not simple at all. Across thousands of years and miles of separation, a shared lineage began to emerge. Not metaphorical, not symbolic, biological, a traceable, undeniable genetic signature. History had been split in two. Now, science was stitching it back together. It began with a single tooth. In 2019, during an excavation near Luxor, Egypt, a joint team of archaeologists uncovered a sealed burial chamber dating back to the Middle Kingdom, around 1900 BCE. Amid the expected treasures and funerary artifacts, they found something unexpected. A human molar, placed in a carved alabaster box, separate from the rest of the remains. Odd reverent, almost ritualistic. The tooth was well-preserved, enough to allow a full DNA extraction. At first, it was just another entry in a growing genetic archive of ancient Egyptians. But when the data was compared to global samples, one anomaly stood out. The mitochondrial DNA sequence had a 97% match to a sample taken over 3,500 kilometers away in Gujarat, India. That Indian sample had been extracted from skeletal remains uncovered in Dolavira, one of the major cities of the Indus Valley civilization. The two individuals, separated by deserts, language, and history, were genetically close. Too close. Could this tooth represent migration, intermarriage, or something even bigger? Shared ancestry from a forgotten people? Suddenly, researchers weren't just looking at Egyptian DNA. They began searching for more physical clues that could connect these civilizations. 
trade goods, ship designs, writing, rituals. And what they began to find painted a picture more complex than anyone had anticipated. The discovery triggered a scientific chain reaction. Leading the charge was Dr. Leila Mahfouz, a genetic anthropologist from Cairo, and Dr. Anil Mehta, an archaeogeneticist based in Delhi. Together, they launched an unprecedented joint initiative, Project Origins, with one objective, to determine if the connection between Egypt and India was an isolated anomaly or the tip of a buried iceberg. Dozens of excavation sites were reopened. Ancient DNA was re-extracted using cutting-edge next-generation sequencing. Isotope analysis, carbon dating, and cranial morphology comparisons were deployed across labs in Europe, Africa, and Asia. Samples from both banks of the Nile and the lost cities of the Indus Valley were scanned for overlapping patterns. But they hit walls. Data inconsistencies, degraded samples, political red tape. Some bones had been contaminated by modern handling. Others were too degraded to be useful. Skeptics dismissed the link as a fluke, the result of modern contamination or statistical noise. Funding threatened to dry up. And yet, the anomalies kept multiplying. An ancient ring found in Lothal bore a symbol nearly identical to one etched on a priest's tomb in Abydos. A strand of hair discovered in an Egyptian tomb matched haplogroups common in South Asia. In a warehouse in Alexandria, a forgotten scroll referenced traders from the land where rivers meet the ocean, possibly describing the west coast of India. What began as a genetic curiosity was evolving into a full-blown historical mystery. If two of humanity's greatest civilizations had been in contact, why had no one noticed? And more importantly, how far did this connection go? The breakthrough came from an unexpected place, a single strand of hair sealed in resin, found in the burial chamber of a noblewoman in Sakura. Preserved in astonishing condition, the strand was sent to a lab in Munich, specializing in ancient DNA reconstruction. Using ultra-sensitive techniques, the team successfully decoded a nearly complete mitochondrial genome. What they found shocked everyone. The genetic profile bore an almost perfect match, not to a known Egyptian lineage, but to a haplogroup commonly found in South Asian populations, particularly in the Indian states of Gujarat and Maharashtra. This wasn't a statistical overlap. It was direct evidence of shared ancestry. In parallel, a skull unearthed in the Indus Valley underwent cranial morphometric analysis. It showed characteristics consistent with North African populations of the same period. Two ancient individuals, thousands of kilometers apart, but biologically intertwined. To rule out modern contamination, scientists replicated the results across three independent labs in Zurich, Delhi, and Boston. The findings were consistent, unmistakable. The two civilizations had not only exchanged goods, they had exchanged genes. Migration, intermarriage, possibly even long-term settlement. This wasn't trade. This was coexistence, buried under millennia of sand, myth, and academic assumption. And now, through the lens of genetics, the silent story was finally speaking. For the first time, science had hard proof. The ancient Egyptians and the peoples of early India were genetically connected. Imagine the Indian Ocean 4,000 years ago, not as a barrier, but as a corridor of civilization. Long before the rise of the Roman Empire, before the Silk Road, great ships carved from teak and cedar braved the monsoon winds. These vessels, guided by stars and seasonal currents, traveled from the Indus ports of Lothal and Dolavira across the Arabian Sea to the Red Sea coast of Africa. From there, traders followed the Nile upriver, reaching the beating heart of ancient Egypt. But they brought more than goods. They brought language, rituals, bloodlines, 
Some stayed, some married, some served in courts or temples. A priest from India might have walked the corridors of a Theban sanctuary. An Egyptian artisan might have carved stone using tools inspired by Indus techniques. Children born from these unions would carry the genetic echo of both worlds, silent witnesses to an alliance long forgotten. On the banks of the Nile, Sanskrit-sounding words may have blended with early Egyptian. In the cities of the Indus, lotus motifs, sacred to both cultures, decorated clay pots and temple walls. Even myths may have merged, gods with animal heads, rivers as sacred lifelines. The parallels were everywhere, but never connected, until now. Through DNA, archaeology, and a willingness to re-examine old assumptions, a new chapter of human history emerges, one where oceans connected rather than divided and where the great civilizations of Egypt and India didn't just coexist. They converged. So much of history has been written in stone, in pyramids, in ruins, in crumbling texts. But now we're learning it's also written in flesh, in cells, in the double helix of ancient DNA that defies borders and rewrites timelines. The connection between Egypt and India was never carved into the monuments we studied. It was coded into the people themselves. Hidden, waiting, silent, until science gave it a voice. This discovery doesn't just change what we know about trade, migration, or ancient politics. It challenges the very idea of how civilizations rise, not in isolation, but in interwoven networks enriched by contact, made stronger by exchange. Egypt and India were not separate stories. They were chapters of the same book, a book we're only beginning to read. And if such a profound connection could go unnoticed for millennia, what other links lie buried beneath deserts, oceans, and forgotten cities? We're just scratching the surface. If you found this as mind-blowing as we did, hit the like button, subscribe for more deep dives into ancient mysteries, and explore the next frontier of hidden history. Because out there, in the bones of the earth and the blood of our ancestors, more secrets are waiting to be revealed. The past isn't dead. It's encoded, and we're finally learning how to read it.